Hey what is good guys, just here, welcome back to the channel and today we're talking about something else. Today it's about analog photography and how that actually matches my style and why I'm still shooting film. So uh, let's get to it. Okay guys, today we're talking like I said about analog cameras, SLR cameras, cameras that we used to shoot in the past and uh, I still have three of them, two uh, are still functional, one of them it's not and uh, I'm just keeping it because I love uh, the way it looks and it reminds me of when I was going out and shoot more and more at the beginning of my journey. But these two cameras that I'm talking today are both Minolta's, one is the Minolta SRT 101, um, this is a beautiful camera and uh, the other one it's the X700, still a Minolta camera but um, this one is the one that I'm shooting the most uh, you know it, we're in the, uh, an era of speed and uh, we don't care about dabbling with all the dials and the knobs or we do because we're shooting Fuji nonetheless these are the cameras that I love the most and I'm gonna tell you a few things about them first of all 20 years ago when I started shooting photography I uh, used to use a Zenith E I mentioned in my previous videos many times uh, that camera is no longer functional so um, I uh, switch to the next one in line which was the Minolta SRT 101 basically this camera and the Zenity look pretty much the same they actually do have a light mirror but it's only functional if you're using the battery but um, the Zenith E doesn't have a light mirror at all so you have to shoot with the Sunny 16 well uh, that's great because you're learning photography and you were getting into uh, all that uh, vibe and all that hype of choosing your composition and uh, framing it and being able to uh, choose every detail from your shutter speed to your uh, aperture and think about it more this is great and uh, like I said this was the next camera but after this one I switched to uh, SLRs and uh, I will probably uh, make a video of my last SLR DSLR that I have uh, that is the Fujifilm uh, S5 Pro I uh, used to own the S3 Pro and then the S5 Pro and that was it then I switched to the D200 and went all the way Nikon until six seven years ago when I switched to mirrorless and there was Sony but that's not the time for uh, history we talk about analog cameras why are they called analog is because everything you are doing with this camera it's based on your skills and uh, you're focusing manually you're setting your aperture manually you're actually setting your ISO the moment you put your film in based on the film ASA or ISO and also uh, you are manually advancing the film that's what you are doing so yeah that's that's how it works um, I do love this sound listen to it so uh, that's why they're called analog because everything you're doing you're using your hands the camera doesn't know what to do if you don't tell her what to do and you have to tell her all the time now why am I shooting uh, SLRs in 2020 it's because it gives me that feel that I need to slow down and I need to think more and uh, realize that the composition that I thought it's good it's my not uh, I have to deal with all the settings and all the features um, that these cameras have I have to set up my uh, shutter speed and uh, manually focusing the scene it's actually uh, not an easy deal but I am uh, pretty used to and I always said that if you want to get into photography if you want to start this journey I think this is one of the cameras that you should go for and I mean a uh, an analog camera not necessarily a Minolta camera I chose Minolta because they have plenty of lenses and the lenses are pretty good they also have great cameras for example this X700 is an automatic camera so it's not so analog uh, you you have an exposure compensation and a program mode uh, also um, you will uh, be able to to uh, matter the photo through your viewfinder to the optical viewfinder because the camera has a uh, matter inside that is also powered by a battery if you take this battery off 
you still be able to use the camera with the Sunny 16, like I said. And uh, if you don't know what Sunny 16 is, I'm gonna make a video about it. If you wanna go, uh, you know, towards film and you wanna understand more, let me know in the comments below, and I'll make a video, more videos about film photography. But nonetheless, uh, this is a camera that I enjoy. It's a small, very small camera. It's almost comparable with my XS10 that I'm filming this video on. Uh, it doesn't have much to it. This is an add-on that I put on. Uh, it's actually a um, uh, eyepiece or an eye hood that uh, fits not exactly perfect on this one, but it does. The only problem is uh, it blocks my uh, finger uh, right here when I'm trying to uh, uh, cock the shutter and uh, you know roll the film. This is the 35 millimeter f 2.8 from an old tights and uh, I think it's an MD lens. Um, or an MC an MC lens and this one I think it's the 135 f2.8 uh, great for portraits uh, now you will probably wondering are these lens comparing to the new lenses and some of them do some of them don't it's about sharpness it's about uh, focus um, speed and acquiring focus using manual focus aperture and uh, the quality of the glass but they do have a patina that you can uh, delete or remove uh, they look good every portrait has that orangish or bluish or greenish tint you have to know what film you are using and uh, how you can counter all those tinting issues but um, I would definitely push everyone towards this camera and in 2020 there is a trend not necessarily this year but it started I think in 2018 when people start shooting more and more film cameras and the, the pr prices are rising considerably and I will um, advise you if you are thinking about it to go ahead and buy one these days because I think that this trend is gonna go for a little bit more and uh, the prices on these uh, cameras that they used to be a hundred dollars 80 bucks 150 now the 250 300 dollars uh, even this one it's around 125 150 dollars lenses as well because uh, with the mirrorless cameras everyone is adapting lenses now and Fujifilm uh, which is the brand that I'm shooting in mirrorless uh, it's a, amazing uh, in terms of adapting lenses and uh, the images are great especially when you're using Fujifilm simulations and there are many so yeah that is why I'm using the um, analog cameras in 2020 and that's why I believe that you should do too and especially like I said if you're studying into photography that is a great way to learn all the uh, functions and all the settings of a camera variables that you have to put in the huge equation to create an amazing photo the aperture the ISO the shutter speed as well as um, other things like uh, manual focusing and uh, you know manual mattering or um, mattering by using sunny 16 which is a very easy rule to always uh, be able to shoot no matter what camera you have uh, even if the you know uh, light meter is a little bit off you can use the sunny 16 rule and be able to shoot um, perfectly exposed photos so that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this video these are the two cameras that i'm using and i'm gonna use in 2021 as well i'm thinking about getting a new uh medium format camera i'm not sure what exactly i used to have the x-pen in the past the uh, camera that allows you to shoot panoramic images on film and that's a great camera but uh hasselblad these days is going up in price and i'm still thinking maybe i'm gonna get a mamiya or maybe i'm gonna get a fujifilm 645 or uh, who knows whatever it is i uh, i will definitely um, get something new and talk about it on this channel if you are not subscribed to the channel please go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell to always uh, know when I'm putting videos up hit that like button it's very important also put your comments in the box down below and let me know what cameras what film cameras are you shooting if you're still shooting why are you thinking of buying it and I will definitely see you in a bit